That sounds rougher than a cob, that bearing in there. I need to inspect the brakes anyways. We need to check this wheel out real good before we install it on the forks. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm the one and only infamous Kentucky Yankee without a doubt. Today we're working on the CB350 basket case. This motorcycle right here was bought in three or four boxes for those of you that don't know. And I am uploading a series of videos showing how to put the thing back together. And today we're working on the front end of it. We'll get the front wheel and brakes and bearings and tire and all that stuff in order on this machine. And we will be one step closer to taking it for its first rip. It's like we hold it with this adjustable wrench on this side. There's a hole on the other side. I'm going to stick a screwdriver through here. I assume that's how you do it. I hadn't looked it up. And then, ah, maybe not. I'm going to get a hammer and smack that. That worked. I'm moving, trying to move quick because my battery's almost dead. Let's look at these brakes. There is no telling how old these brakes are, but they looked pretty good to me. That's cool. But our bearing is, again, listen, listen guys, listen. That's so loud, I'm sure you guys can hear it, listen. So I gotta replace some bearings. I'm gonna pop this seal out first real quick. Oh, there it goes. It looks to me like we could just flip it over and knock these bearings out. There's a spacer in between them. I'm moving the spacer over a little bit. I'm going to attempt to knock the bottom bearing out first. Let's see if that works. Oh, yeah. She just dropped out of there quick. Just fell to the ground. Look at all that rust in there. That's why they're so crunchy sounding. All right, so this bearing needs to be knocked out from the other side like that. So that's, that's what the deal is. Not a big deal. Easy enough. I set you up back there so you can watch the bearing drop under the table. Maybe. Let's see. You see it drop? You see it drop underneath the table? Here, watch. Ready? There it goes. This right here is 400. And I'm going to sand where the shoes go on the drum just to deglaze them a little bit. And then I'll spray them back off with some brake clean to get the grit out of there. And we will reinstall the bearings. New bearings are sealed. You should never have to put any grease in them. You can't. They're sealed. And I should put a little oil or something around here, I guess. Hold on. Let me do that. All right. Here's a little bit of oil around the edge of that maybe a little in there see you see that my hand in the way shover in there it'll go either direction use a socket the same size as this outside race see of this of this bearing so you don't mess the bearing up you never want to hit them from the center or anything like that You can hear it bottom out, and that's it for this one. Now I'll put the seal on there. I like our original seal better. See how it, I don't know what you call that, convey, convex? I don't know what you call it. This one's flat, so I like this one better because it kind of diverts dirt and water away from it. But that's, you know, this is a new seal, so it'll work. little oil on the inside of the seal here. That's it for that side. Flip her over. Let's not forget our spacer. I'm going to clean that up real quick. All cleaned up and it fits right like that. Little oil again. And now we'll wallop that in there. Yep. 
you can feel it and hear it bottom out this seal right here is not the same size as this seal in here and of course it's not you're never going to get the right parts ordering them online or any place else i'm sanding off these brake shoes it's called deglazing them just like i did with the drums sometimes they'll get grease or oil or something and they'll get like slick you know you want them to grab this is a little bit rougher than it should be you guys can you know criticize me in the comments about that next I'm gonna take this piece out and here this is for the speedo speedometer and there's this one little piece here I wish I had a clean something to put them on there you go and there's a usually there's shims underneath them yeah see there's one shim there I'm just gonna take this out and clean it up I'm gonna reuse this old seal it still feels pretty pliable hopefully we don't have any trouble with it this roller in here uh, the drive gear anyways I'm gonna clean all this out some brake clean put new grease in it and then we'll get our wheel back together all right see there that is a gob of grease this is all cleaned up and ready to go and I reassembled it with grease if you have ever done any filming using grease you know what a pain it is you're always having to clean your hands off and you're getting grease on them again and you're touching your camera with the grease so anyways i didn't film it so please forgive me for that you guys know how it went back together real simple before we put this assembly back together you know this wheel and everything let's look at another corner of the shop all right so these are parts for the cb 350 and this big box right here is tires let me, I want to unpackage everything here, guys, and show you. Perhaps the most exciting thing I got is in this box here. Can you guess what it is? Guess in the comments below what's in this box. Other than the tires, this is the most exciting part to me that came in. So we'll put this one aside. Okay, there's an inner tube. These are beads. I'll show you guys what these are when we do it, but they're balancing beads so that we can... Balance the tires from the inside. Okay, I already opened these the other day. The rings that go on the inside of the rims so you don't cut your tubes. Check it out. Two brand spanking new beautiful tires. And these tires are Shinko. So, pretty cool. I researched Shinko really quick. And what I found was they are possibly made by Yokohama. They are supposed to be Japanese tires. Let me look and see. Nope, says Korea on there. I thought they were Japanese, so these are some really cheap tires. I'm not gonna put that many miles probably on the bike. If I like it, we'll get a better set. So now the grand finale. If you haven't guessed already, guess and leave it in the comments. Do it before I open this box. It's a very important part in here. I'm excited to look at them. I just gave you a clue, I said them individually packaged here they are guys ready for the big reveal sweet sweet exhaust pipes much needed look at that isn't that awesome check it out little thing in the back there they these look nice they really do they look like they're halfway decent quality I don't know I also got the graphite rings and the new seals remember I jacked up the seals in the front on the header pipes I got new ones of those I'm sure they're in this box too it pains me very much to change this tire but what the deal is the reason I'm changing it I mean it's got some small cracks in it but normally I would run a tire like this it's not perfectly great safe but it's all right but the back one had some big deep major I've been sitting flat forever cracks in them so I had to get a new tire for the back. You know, both of them tires I bought were 84 bucks. I thought, matching set, new tubes, new tires, new ring guards. 
everything, balance them out, we'll have a nice smooth ride. But this goes against my better judgment, changing a perfectly good tire out for a perfectly good tire. When you do this, you don't want to catch the tube with your screwdriver or your tire tool or whatever. You don't, you got to be careful of that. In this case, it doesn't matter, but I still, I don't want to ruin a good tube if it's good, so I'll try and be careful. Wasn't too long ago that I changed a tire on a moped in one of my videos, but I told you guys when I bought this basket case that I would show you each step to get it back on the road so that's what I'm doing if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet do that now if you want to watch updates on this motorbike I've been working on I would appreciate it and you won't miss any new content so get the tube out of here there we go you know, both of these tubes, I think, had slow leaks, so I don't know. I don't know about this here. I don't feel like I have to say much. You guys can see what I'm doing. Just kind of getting her pried out here. You could spray a little soap and water to make it easier to get it off and on, but there it is. And look at that. Beautiful tread. A few little cracks and a good Brigstone tire. I don't know. I feel a little bit of shame in myself for changing it, but it is what it is. This is the old right here, like a, I don't know what they call this, a rim guard maybe or something anyways. Just a piece of rubber. And it protects these where the spokes are, it protects the tube. So I'm going to take this old one off because I have new ones. And why not? I got new tires, new tubes. You know, it's just a free-for-all around here. Now I'm going to take my wire brush and clean up all this little bit of, any little bit of rust around this wheel. Rim's all cleaned up, see? It's clean on the inside here, so why is it on the front? of the Kentucky Yankees motorbike. And I'll tell you why, it had some loose spokes, unfortunately. So if you, you can't just tighten the spokes up. I mean, you need to initially, but then you have to chew the wheel. The wheel is going wobbling in and out now. So what I've got here is a Harbor Freight dial caliper. Some of you may have seen this on my previous videos. And it's set up and all it does is indicate to me how the wheel is coming in or out. So see as I roll it, you see the dial moving and it comes back. So what I need to do is just take my little adjustable wrench right here. They, they make a, they make a, what are these sprockets or a spoke tool. They make a spoke tool that fits on here, but I have this adjustable wrench. I'm just gonna simply go around it, tighten what needs to be tightened, loosen what needs to be loosened to make the wheel true. You notice this is hooked to my fork, so if this moves, it doesn't make any difference. I have certainly not mastered this. I'm sure it looks like I'm fumbling around with this because I truly am. I'm going to turn the camera off, and it will take me a while. I have, I'm not very good at this, but I'll get it done. Here is what I ended up with. Eh, it's not bad. We're within specs, I'm sure. See, it's got some rough spots on it, so it's hard to tell. I should polish the wheel, but... We're within five thousandths, I think. So that's plenty close enough for a wheel. I think specs maybe is twelve thousandths. Anyways, should be plenty close for a wheel. I'll spin it fast. See if you could find a wobble in it. I think it's pretty straight. Our new rim sock, I guess that's what you call it, has a hole. Where the valve stem goes, we need to line that up. Here we go. That's nice. It's actually pretty nice. 
I like the way that fits. So you see there, it covers up all your spokes so it does not damage your tube. I had to go to the Dollar Gentral and get some of this Dollar Gentral baby powder because I don't really have baby powder just laying around. And we'll just fluff her up there. It's so that when I put the tube on there, it doesn't bind. It'll kind of slip around without pinching the tube. Next is the tire. This would appear to be a directional tire. I would think that this would want to rotate like this is the front and it would rotate this direction. So how is that indicated? Yeah, all right. Right there it says rotation front. So you can kind of tell with the pattern of the tire. But now I gotta figure out which way this wheel goes on the motorcycle real quick. And I'll be right back with you because I can't remember. I'm gonna put a little slip them on here. Windex kind of counteracts the... I just want to get it on the bead because you're gonna have baby powder in here you don't want to mix it up so there we go we'll just slip her down with any luck I will make this look easy but again that would require luck so I don't know how it'll go we're only getting the bottom on right now not the top. So not too bad. Time for some more baby powders. Just throw around in the... Woo! Don't get carried away with it. it. Smells nice. If nothing else, your baby powder will smell nice. Woo. Ah. Now for our tube. Let's see. Uh, here's our hole for our tube. And fortunately, our little rim guard did not move much, so that's good. Just gonna put a little bit of air in the tube so it'll, you know, take its shape, its form. That's enough, just enough to get it to take its shape is fine with me. And we'll put a little baby powder here on the tube. Ah, whoo, funky boy. I'm getting it on the seal, you shouldn't do that. Funky, funky, funky. So now, we will line up our valve stem. So, this is a little tricky, this part. Let's see if I can do it. Get our, stuff our tube in here. I would say this is the hardest part. Getting his valve stem lined up through this hole. And there we are, we're in. So that's cool. I'm gonna just loosely, I'm going to loosely put this nut on here. Just to kind of hold it, but I, I don't think it's gonna go nowhere anyways. So be careful not to catch your tube in there with your tool. That's the biggest thing on this part. So next I'm going to fill it up with air. We're going to put the beads in later. I want to make sure the tube's all good and seated, no leaks, stuff like that. Then we'll do the balancing beads later. I will show you how to do it though. Next I like to let all the air out. Uh, just take the valve core out let all the air out of the tube. Then just stick it back in and fill it back up and you're done. The reason I do that is just the less of a chance of it pinching the tube. It lets it relax, fill it back up. It just less of a chance of the tube getting pinched. 
There you go. Tire's ready to go on. I have this old rusty fender right here. And this bracket I noticed was missing off of it. I do have good fenders in the box over here. Pretty, a lot better condition. But I'm going to save those. I thought I could be polishing on those for if we do the restoration. And I'll just put old ones on for now. Something cool I found. And this is what you get into with basket cases. This was labeled, this bag is labeled headlight. And... I, I kept looking at all this stuff in here, looking, looking, looking. I could not figure out what the heck it has to do with a headlight. And it doesn't have anything to do with it. This actually has to do with a fender. I stared at it so much that I realized what it's for when I came to this fender. You see that right there? That fits. Whoops, sorry. There's a piece in there. It's this little bracket here. It's just like that. It's got plastic pieces that fit up in here in this bag. So, you know, the bag's just labeled wrong. I don't know why, but that's how it goes with basket cases. I'm going to show you something real quick, and then we'll put this together. This is uh, Lime Away. It's supposed to do lime calcium rust. I don't have a lot of confidence in it, but we have nothing to lose with this fender, so I thought I would try it. It's supposed to remove the rust. I'll slather it on there. We'll see what it does. Slather slather and slather probably shouldn't get it on my hands if it's acid but I'll go rinse them off here in a minute whatever so my hands are burning maybe it does work all right I moved it outside and what I've been doing is a little bit is I've been following up with a spray bottle see like it's already got the lime away but this is like a foamy spray and it's lime away too same brand just kind of keeping it wet with that and it's been a few short minutes actually and I think I think it's working to my amazement shock and surprise we'll see after a few more minutes what happens this is just like a brass wire brush it won't hurt the chrome not that it even matters but I'm gonna scrub her down a little bit this is just a garden hose with a nozzle on it been literally uh, just a few minutes so I mean I have not worked on this long guys 10 minutes maybe at the most and really not working at it at all just sprayed that stuff let it sit I did use the brush a little bit but anyways I don't know what do you think I don't think it's bad I'm actually surprised and pleasantly impressed with this product I could do some more work on it maybe I guess but uh, not today because the little woman is wanting to go out and get something to eat so I gotta go I gotta I gotta change my shirt and we're going to get something to eat it's the next day and I'm getting ready to put this bracket on here so these fit right up in here see like that they're little plastic something or another's is what they're called and they just fit up in here as like a spacer and then we put it on our fender here and we're gonna throw some screws in there and shove it through that little hole there and then before we put our nut on there's this little piece right here that fits under there and then you'll put your nuts on there my decision was not to clean and polish on this fender anymore it's good enough for me these holes are corroded so i'm just chasing them here with this tap chasing them i don't have thread chasers i have a tap and that'll work just fine. Got a little transmission fluid on there. See, they're they're really, really corroded. I gotta put a little pressure just to get them started. Look at that. But see, after they get started, we're rolling. And of course, it's aluminum, so it's not hard. I gotta talk to you guys. I'm in a real hurry to get this thing done because I'm wanting to go. I wanna take you folks along, like on a camping trip or something. Do a little moto vlogging, etc., etc., etc. And I don't mind riding if it's cold, but it's, if it's straight up winter time, I mean, I just can't. There is one bolt that is bigger on this fender where it's mounted right here, this one. 
and it's made like that from the factory and I'm sure somebody out there has knowledge of why it's like that and I am hoping that that someone would share the information with the rest of us because I don't know what that's for. Why would they have one bigger bolt than all the other bolts in this one specific location? Always best to use new lock washers if you can, especially cotter pins too, but I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use these old ones. Straight away after I asked what this big bolt is for, I realized quickly, since I was working on it, that it was for this bracket right here. This bracket bolts here and there, and that is to hold the brake shoes in place, so when you pull them, you know, and so they don't just keep spinning with the wheel. That's all that is there. I need to torque these down now to, I think, 18 foot-pounds. You better look it up if you're working on your own motorcycle because I am not 100% sure on that. This is indeed a paramount moment because we're getting ready to lower this thing down, take a look at it with the new suspension on it, and then move it over to the lift where I can finally work on it with some comfort. And of course, the reason I couldn't put it on the lift, I could have, but the reason I didn't is because I had to work on all this front end and thought it would be easier just to do it like this. Ah. That's it for today, guys. I hope you're enjoying this series. Whether you're a newcomer or a lifetime subscriber, I'm always interested in your input. Tell me what you guys think of what I'm doing here with this basket case. If you think I can improve the video somehow, let me know what you think about that. I'm always interested to know what everybody thinks and, you know, try to accommodate you folks so you enjoy these videos. We'll see you next time.